Hey guys, I finally got the Gaia. I had to wait for another one because my first unit had a worse imbalance than my D.Va. Thank you, Lee. But yeah, you cannot make this shit up. <laughs> Legion QC is indeed very, very real. Lucky for me though, Effect Audio actually covered the shipping this time and it didn't take two months. So <laughs> thank you, Effect Audio. And take notes, Lee. So now that I finally have a working unit, how does it sound? Very, very aggressive. Like angry metalheads aggressive. It's super detailed, resolving and clean as evident by the upper mids and treble. There's just a shit ton of it. Imaging is also super sharp and precise. The Gaia is no doubt a technical beast, whatever you want to call it. And in my opinion, it's a treble headset and the end game for V-shaped IEMs. It's got a good amount of bass, not a bass headset by any means, but the low end is very high quality. Reminds me of the Monarch Mark III's. Punchy, clean, textured, very fast attack, and decay never gets muddy and you can hear a bit of air slamming as well. Very detailed low end. It doesn't have any mid bass scoop so thank god for that but instead Lee decided to scoop out the upper mids. It's kind of like what a mid bass scoop does you know it scoops up the 300 400 hertz region and instead shifts the focus and emphasis on the sub bass and gives you that very subwoofer like bouncy texture. Whereas the Gaia on the other hand scoops up the 1k and emphasizes the rest of the upper mids and treble which gives it that aggressive sharp and energetic presentation. Now if you love getting bombarded with OCD details then you're gonna love the Gaia. It's like the mess but the vocals are more energetic, more forward, more detailed and you know even more aggressive than the mess. You can hear all the micro nuances in the voices and likewise the treble is also very energetic, detailed, sharp. It's got a good amount of air but not super airy and smooth like the OG Helios for example. Again it's just more sharp and attention grabbing. The Gaia soundstage is above average, still smaller than the Nightingale and around the same as the Monarch Mark III's because the main focus of the show is in the energetic upper regions. They're more forward and the lower mids and low end takes a step back. At mid volume, genres like pop, hip hop, EDM, indie and even acoustics tracks sound engaging and exciting on the Gaia like it's supposed to. I don't recommend it for higher volumes because the vocal and cymbals just get way too shouty and sharp. Like. <laughs> this ringing in my ears after I turned up the volume to test it. This is more evident on rock and metal tracks. I think the guy has too much energy for those unless again you like that aggressive presentation then <laughs> go for it. Who am I to say right? In terms of technical performance again it's very good. It's right up there with the mess and the monarchs of the world so top of the line detail and resolution but just more aggressive energetic and sharper. The 530 on the other hand has a very similar treble presentation. Still sharp but a lot warmer, less aggressive in the upper mids and overall I personally like it more than the Gaia even though it's not on the same level resolution wise. It's definitely less fatiguing than the Gaia and it just hurts my ears less and it's more comparable to the egl 7 m in terms of technical performance and just really really good for jazz, blues and instrument tracks because of the extra mid bass. Now I wouldn't call the 530 a fully warm set because the elevated treble is enough to cut through and shift the balance so it's not going to be like twilight levels of warm because it does have more air and energy than the twilights. But the mid bass definitely adds a lot more meat to the sound which also means the vocals are a bit colored and they do get masked a bit in busier songs and can sound overly husky and not as open and detailed as the Gaia. Now in terms of OCD detail, the Gaia is going to be better. It costs three times more, so it's not really a fair comparison. But versus the ego 7 m the OG Oracles, the top, the 530 sounds warmer and less balanced, which is neither good or bad. If you're looking for an endgame warm signature, but also want treble extension and air on top of that, then the 530 is perfect for you in my opinion. Again, for jazz and instrumental tracks with little to no vocals, you don't notice the masking in the 1.5k region. The 530 is very full and lush sounding. Intimate presentation I would say but also has that sharpness on top from the treble. The sound stage I would say is average, little bit smaller than the Gaia and an area that might be a turn off for some is in the vocals again because of the extra mid bass plus the 1.5k masking. So if you want a clear open and extended vocals then the OG Oracles, the EJ07M, even the variations, top Studio 4s will all be still better. But if you want something more unique, something warm and not Harman or Diffuse Field IEM tune, then 530 is a solid choice in my opinion. The amber colorway is super beautiful as well and you get this like <laughs> cool little wooden box as like a packaging. On top of that, I haven't heard any QC issues from EPZ yet so compare that to Elysian, 
you know and lastly i do want to talk cables real quick this is the cadmus and this is the aries s both look very slick very nice now i volume match them and versus other high quality cables like the dragon scale i don't hear much of a difference personally however there is a slight difference going from a very cheap cable like the trues or the zeros or even the ew200s to the cadmus or the aries s it's just less distortion because of the higher quality materials other than that i wouldn't say it changes the sound or anything like look if you can hear a difference then all the power to you right but for me if i'm looking to buy cables i'm basing my decision off of the aesthetics how it feels the build material as well as small convenience features like being less tangle free as well as this screw plug design thing i don't know if you can see it but basically it helps it from pulling apart or getting stuck in the jack kind of like this one over here which is very annoying. All these little things add up, so if you want to invest in a nice cable, go for it. The way I view buying cables is the same as I buy clothes. It looks nice, the quality is a little bit better. Functionality wise, not much of a difference, right? But, you know, it just looks nice. Just don't drop $500 on a cable, please. But yeah, that's it for now. Thanks for being patient with the Gaia review, and thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see everyone in the next one.